Uh, my name is Jake. That is my wife, Julie, over there. We are the middle school youth pastors. So, I'm Jeff. My wife, Jenny, is back here, and we are the high school youth pastors. Today you get a, uh, today you get to join us for Youth Sunday. And, you know, Youth Sunday is a great day. And I, and I just want to, as I was praying last night, I just want to kind of put into perspective what is happening in our youth group. Like, just take a moment and think about it. You know, these kids that played in the worship band, they chose to do this. They, in a second, you're going to hear kids come up and share, and they chose to do this. It wasn't forced upon them. It wasn't like, hey, we really need to make a good showing for the church. These are kids that are volunteering, and this is a small percentage of our kids. If you were able, if you ever sat in on one of our services and you listened to the small groups and you listened to what they talk about and how they share and how involved they are with God. As you walked in, you saw a sign that says, champion the youth. These kids are choosing God. These kids are choosing to put aside everything else and follow after God 100% of their lives. Through the good and through the bad. It doesn't mean we're always perfect or we always get it right. But they're always trying to choose to follow after God. And that sign that says, champion the youth, I want you to think about as you're, as you're watching our students, as you're watching them share, as you're sitting through worship and I want you to think about how can I help champion the youth? Maybe it's just praying for them. We need all the prayer we can get. You can't pray enough for our kids. You know, maybe, but maybe that's it. Maybe it's something else. Whatever it looks like, think about that as we go through this. I was praying last night, and I was just kind of like thinking about our youth and everything. And God just kind of showed me, you know, let's just for a moment. I mean, I was just, I don't want to be insensitive, but like not worried about everything else that's going on, Right? We live in a world that is complete full of chaos. Everything, there's chaos absolutely everywhere. And sometimes it feels like you don't even know which direction you're supposed to be going. But I can promise you one thing, that I know for a fact, that right here in Chico, at our church, Life Church, God is doing something in our youth group. He is dramatically changing them from the inside out. I think if you look back, like, just a couple years ago, if where we were and where they are now, I mean, it's... You wouldn't even recognize us spiritually, the change that is happening. And so I just want you guys to just enjoy this, but also just keep them back in mind. How can I help be a part of that? How can I help support them, pray for them? I I tell you what, if you could just sit in and see what God's doing one time, it's pretty amazing. It is awesome things are happening. Often I'll come to youth and thinking like, man, this is just another thing to do on my plate and kind of tired and like going through the motions, but I leave there with just such energy. I met with somebody this week and talked over coffee and I told them like, I feel like our youth group right now is just like speeding, like full speed ahead in God and serving him. And I'm just like trying to set up guardrails, like trying to keep up with them at times, not like how I have in previous ministry where if I've been kind of leading the charge and pulling them on, like, drudging through. But, like, they're flying ahead and teaching me things, and their energy is, is, like, leading the way. And I'm just, like, setting up, like, barriers. Like, don't don't go too far out this way. Don't go too far out that way. Like, trying to keep up with them. Um, So we didn't invite some of those kids that are leading that charge up this service to share with you what God's laying on their heart. So as they come up, I'll kind of give an intro of what they're going to talk about. So our five students, come on down. Jake's like, my phone is. <laughs> I was curious to see how they would sit because some of them were here last service to see how it went. And I, and I was interested to see who would sit where. So we'll see how this works out. Um, so we've given a, a bunch of junior hires and high schoolers a central verse to speak around. And we've given them the liberty to just let God pour into your life and your heart and see what he has for you. So they've been working through this for, for a couple weeks and given us little notes and tidbits of what they're going to share. But... Um, we just want them to share with you from their perspective what this verse means in their life and what God wants to share through them. So um, are we going to go down the line or mix it up this time? I think uh, my daughter started first last time, so yours should this time. My daughter should start first. <laughs> She's super anxious about it, like, please don't choose me, please don't choose me. This is Peyton. Yeah. <clears throat> 
And, and, and just so you guys know up on stage, like Peyton has been in youth group since sixth grade. And she's a sophomore now. So she's probably out of this group been in our youth ministry the longest. All the way down to, it just happened to be, these guys on the end have been here about two months. Like w with us, two months. And they're now on stage sharing. So a, a, a big perspective on what's going on. Um, we've got seasoned and we've got new, but the, the excitement is happening all over the place. I don't really want people cheering. I'm not that kind of person. Um, I'm honestly, um, a couple years ago, I would have been like the first one to volunteer and like the first one to um, do all of this. But like through like really realizing who God is, I kind of realized that there's also like a weight in like um, some seriousness to being up here that I didn't realize before, and that's not to say, like, what I had to say before wasn't still good to hear, but I'm a little bit more, like, um, taken aback because I'm like, God, I just want you to have glory, and I don't want to be up here saying my words anymore. Um, so normally I would be sitting down there. First service I was, and it was great, guys. Um, <laughs> But today I'm up here, and I think that's also the beauty of Christ because it says in the Bible that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if we all let that happen, we would all be out there. But we're in here today, which I'm glad that you guys are all here. Um, sorry. It's a little shaky. <laughs> so, Yeah. The verse is John 15, 7 through 8. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit in Jesus Christ and so prove to be my disciples. So when I started like researching about this verse and starting to pull ideas and whatever God wants to say about this verse, I looked up the meaning of abide and there was a couple meanings but the one that stood out to me is to dwell and continue without fading. And I thought it was sin significant because if we're dwelling in the Lord, we can't also be dwelling in the world. And um, I've heard this over and over again on recent podcasts and stuff, and Pastor Jeff said it, I think it was last week, but the devil owns a fence. So if we're dwelling in the Lord, we have to be all the way on this side of the fence. We can't be in the middle seeing God a little bit, seeing the devil a little bit, and hanging out. Like, that's not what we're called to do. So, in order to do that, we have to put all our faith in God and put him first. We have to abide in him. So, I also have Matthew 27, 31 through 33. It says, Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, what shall we wear, for the pagans run after these things, but your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The cool thing about this verse is that it expands on the verse um, John 15, 7 through 8, is because it talks about putting God first. And these two things have, like, things in common, but also things that are different in cool ways. And that's why I love the Bibles, because it adds that depth. But um, some things that I got is when we put God first, we begin to dwell completely in him. And we begin to place our wants and desires in his hands. Like it says, do not worry about what shall we wear or what shall we do so we begin to place our wants and desires into his hands. And we begin to worry less. It says at the beginning of the Matthew verse, it says, um, can one of you add a single hour to your life by worrying? And the cool thing about God is when we put our trust in him and we put him first and we abide in him, 
we begin to worry less. And that glorifies God because we're giving him priority over our hearts. And when we abide in him, then we can bear fruit in our lives. Like it says at the um, bottom of um, John 15, verse 7 through 8, um, that you bear much fruit in Jesus Christ. And the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And our lives begin to be more full of these things, not because circumstantially everything is like, oh, yes, love, joy, peace, patience. It's just because, like, circumstantially, I am not, like, like peaceful right now because this is <laughs> definitely not the place that I would want to be right now, but because of the Lord, I feel somewhat peace. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> yeah, so when we put him first, then we can produce fruit in our life, and we can be more patient with our si sisters and brothers in Christ. We can be more gentle. We can be more kind to those around us. And at the bottom of verse 15, John 15, verse 7 through 8, it says, And so prove to be my disciples. And so when we're doing all these things, we're also called to be disciples. And what do disciples do? They tell others so that they can become disciples. They tell others about Jesus. And the cool thing is, when we tell others about Jesus, then they can put him first and abide in him. And they can put their wants and desires into his hands and worry less. Then they can produce more love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And bring God glory. And then they can tell somebody else. They were talking about how the youth group has grown so much. And it's because of some people abiding in God and then they're being disciples and telling other people about God, and that creates change. So we must realize that these verses are not just about me and my life. They just only bring me peace, because I'm not going to keep that peace to myself. I want to share it with people around me. And when it does this, it works not out, not necessarily better things for us, but also works out things bigger than us. Because of his grace and our obedience. So will you choose to abide completely in Christ, knowing that this not only impacts your life, but it can affect your brothers, it can affect your classmate, it can affect your neighbor, it can affect your friend, even your enemy. It can affect their life and their, their eternity. And that's all God. It's um, it's always amazing. Like, you know, you know kids, but you always you don't always know what God's gonna like is doing in their lives and speaking through them. And uh, sometimes with middle schoolers, you don't even know if they're paying attention. Like, you're just like, <laughs> did you get anything out of what I said today? Like, sometimes I'll be like, okay, here's the one point I want you to remember, right? But we have some amazing middle schoolers, and I was just kind of throwing this idea about sharing, and Brenda was like, I would love to share. And, like, it always is amazing to me. Sometimes the people that are maybe not always super, not loud like me. Like, they're not like me. Like, they're the exact opposite. Like, they're not loud, outgoing. Like, someone's just going to fall into verse. But Brenna always says something amazing to share. Every single time we open up for discussion, she's, she's just awesome. So she's in the middle school, and she's going to come up and share right now. I do not know how I'm going to compete against that, Peyton. <laughs> okay, so mine's shorter, but it's about the same verse. Um, John 15, 7 through 8. These verses in the Bible are short, but have lots of meaning and can be very powerful. Verse 15, 7 really explains how following Jesus and letting him be a part of us can do so much for our lives. Uh, we have such an advantage that we can just pray and be guaranteed our, to our answers. Um, simply all you have to do is welcome Jesus into your heart and love the Lord. Let him shine through you. 
Um, the beginning of verse 8 is telling us that God wants us to come to him and ask him for the things we need. It gives, us gl- it gives, gl- sorry, it gives glory to God when we come to him with our requests. God wants us to be successful and, and have the things that we need by trusting in him. Bearing much fruit is abiding in him, and that means to have faith in him and know that he is everything we need. By being, in, by being a disciple, you are showing the world that you are a follower of Christ. You believe in him, and you want to tell others about him. These verses are so important to live by because it reminds us that God wants us to come to him with our needs. He wants us to have faith in him and share the love with others around us. So I got to tell you a quick story. Years, years ago, like three, four years ago, we took a, a trip to Santa Cruz as a little mission trip. And we took 25 kids with us. One boy. All girls and Tochi. Like, that was it. Like, that was the whole entire group. Like, like, we had one boy in our youth group. It is so exciting to not only see what God's doing in the life of everyone, but to see what God's doing in the life of young men. And, like, changing are, 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 I mean, just, they're just can radically change them. And we need strong men of God, just like we need strong women of God. And to see him fulfill that in both aspects is so cool. So I love that in this one instance, we were outnumbering the girls because it is amazing what God has done. So next we have Drew. Um, <laughs> did you want to, did you want to share anything awesome about me? <laughs> Okay, um, I'm Drew. I'm going to be talking about the same verse. And yeah, so I took abide as meaning connections and trust in God. And the first verse that I found would be Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known, for go- or made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, and your minds in Christ Jesus. Even though you don't understand God completely and what his power is, you can still believe in him and put your trust in him and give him and pray about all your anxieties and give him that and still stay connected with him by praying. The next verse is 1 John 5.14. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Even though we may ask for something that may seem a little impossible, if it's within his will, he will hear us and he'll try and help us. Um, He will, yeah, he'll hear us. Um, Next two verses, Psalm 23, 3. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If we stay confident in him and believe in him, he will lead us the right direction and we have to trust him in order to do that. The next verse is Psalms 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They come for me. He is with us when we stay connected, or he is with us if we stay connected and work with him so we will be protected and won't have fear. He's com- he comforts us even though we may be against some evil that we don't know how to power through. He can be with us and help us whenever we need, if we pray. Pastors Jake and Julie just keep making my life easier and easier by pumping out these kind of eighth graders. Like I just, yeah, I'll take that group again. That's awesome. Um, So we've graduated several groups of eighth graders up. We've also grown by friend invite. Both these last guys came through friend invite. And there came in a time for me where I just returned from summer break. I'm trying to learn all the new names because a bunch of new people came during summer. And then these guys show up and I'm like, okay, who's the buff one? Who's the tall one? Like, but both have kind of been linked into my small group. So I've had some great conversations with them. And they're like just from the get-go full on. And I'm like, these guys must have had like some background in church. Like, I gave my life to God like two weeks ago. I'm like, serious? Like, and you're that on fire? It's ridiculous. So the first one up is Garrett. Come on up. Yeah. 
Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. Did y'all mess with that car wheel? Car wheel was crazy. Garrett's running about eight Rice Krispies right now, just so you oh, guys are yeah, prepared. I'm, I'm, on, I'm geeking. So throughout the chapter, right, there is three points that I want to converse about. There is fruit, abiding by the vine, and pruning. I want to go into the pruning aspect. So in chapter, I mean, John 15, verse 1. Uh, and two, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes. That may bear more fruit. The pruning of the branch, I related to sin, and I related to things that strays away from God. So, the pruning of the branch is rotting the other branches, and by the vine dresser, vine dresser, he takes it away. Now, what is fruit? I believe fruit to be the blessings of God. Anything mental, physical that he gives us, right? The branch that is being pruned is things he does not give us. He does not give us anxiety. He does not give us depression. He does not give us fear. He gives us happiness, joy, comfort, all these things that we need in life. And so as I continue, I would also talk about how to abide by the vine. Now, in John 15, 12, it says to love another and as thy neighbor. That is just one of many commandments. To abide by the vine is to abide by the teachings, by to live through the teachings of God, by to live through the Bible, by to do what he says. You got to abide to him. You got to stay true to him. Without abiding to the vine, you're not going to gain any fruit at all. It's just not going to happen. And as I'd like to take away, I would also want to add that every plant, no matter what it is, needs soil and sunlight. God, I believe, the sunlight is our life. I'm not going to try to, like, dim it down, but I'm going to say it. We would be dead because we've all sinned. By Jesus dying on our cross, he saved us all. And I would like to point out that that's the sunlight. The soil is our foundation, our foundation of the condition of our hearts and what we believe in and our true faith. So, yeah, and by exploiting that, we need to go into a daily true personal relationship with God. We need to talk with him every day, as if we would talk to another loved one, as if we would talk to a family member, a, a, a significant other, a friend. We need to talk to him consistently and all the time and talk to him with our true self. So these guys have been linked to the hip, like, the, their first week was us prepping for a high school lead, and, and I said, all right, everybody who's come back next week and wants to lead a small group, come over here, and everybody who doesn't goes over there, and I'm like, where are those guys going? They're going to the lead a small group group, and the next week, Ryan Wright pulls me aside, and he's like, look at Gavin, he's leading the group. He's leading the entire group, like second week, I'm like, where'd this guy come from? But the wisdom these guys have and the, like the infancy and the passion of their walk with Christ is just giving me fire to keep on going on. So this is Gavin. Hi, uh, Gavin here. Um, and the verse I really wanted to focus on today was obviously John 15, 7 through 8. But I wanted to focus on the start of 7 and the end of 8. The start of 7 is, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and or and it will be done for you. And then in the end of eight, it says, that to be much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. The biggest point of this was, it's really easy to show our love for God and show the blessings that he has for us and he's put into our life when our life is easy. When we, when we appreciate all the blessings, we're going through our easy point. It's easy to take a step back from everything. Be like, man, this is nice. I'm not going to keep growing. I'm going to stay where I am. This is easy. But... It's a roller coaster. We're going to be at our highs. We always got to go back down. When you hit those lowest points, that's the point where we need to show the love to others the most. We need to show our gratefulness towards God, especially to the people who haven't built a relationship with Christ yet. Those are the people that need to see it. The reason why they don't believe is because they don't see his word. They don't believe that his love is real. The biggest thing with love is we can't see it, but we can feel it. The same thing goes for God. We cannot see God, but we can see him through his blessings that he gives us. We can feel him through the love that he shows for us, especially the words that he shows through other people to work through us. That's why we say God and Jesus Christ works through us. 
because he works through us and works through others to show it to other people. Another verse that I wanted to tie into this was Matthew 10, 22. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be, will be saved. A big part of that is talking about as Christians, believers of Christ, people that we have committed our life to Christ, a lot of people turn, turn against us. We'll lose a lot of people in our life. We'll lose a lot of relationships in our life. A big part of that for me is I lost my parents to this. Um, I didn't grow up in a Christian household, but I found Christ on my own. I'm so thankful for this because committing my life to Christ has given me this whole new community. It's given me a new family here. It's given me a real family, people that I can go through to my hardest times. And another part of that, tying in, is I wanted to stare, share the story of Abram and Isaac. Although Sarah was past the age of childbearing, God promised Abram and Sarah that they would have a son, and Isaac was born. Later, to test Abram's obedience, God commanded Abram to sacrifice the boy. Abram made all of the preparations for the ritual sacrifice, but God spared Isaac at the last moment. A big part of this is showing that sometimes we will have to leave the blessings that God has put in our life to lead to a new path. He has a new path for us, and a part of that is understanding that he has a greater plan for us when we leave those blessings behind, even though it's hard and we might be attached to them, they bring blessings into our life. Me with my parents, they took care of me for, for, for the first 16 years of my life. They loved me. They put a roof over my head. They were my family. But I, had, I was unfortunately taken away from that. But with that, I've been brought a new family here. I've been brought relationships with people that I'd never known before. And within such a short amount of time, they're the closest people I've ever had in my life. A part of when we say we abide and God's word shows in 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. It's a big part of love here. I've said it a lot, and I'll say it again. We show love to everyone around us. We, and we show love to those who have sinned because in Jeremiah 33, 8, I will cleanse them from all the sins they have committed against me, and I will forgive them for all their sins of rebellion against me. If God loves the people that sin against him who have not built a relationship with him, if he can forgive us, me, myself, I've sinned against him. I did not, I was not raised in a Christian household. I committed my life to Christ three months ago. That was my first time going to a youth group. I didn't go to church for another month. If he can forgive me and he was there with me through my entire journey, why can't he do the same for others? That's all. Hopefully this gives you guys a little glimpse of what we get every Wednesday. It just, like every Wednesday I leave like at the, at the brink of emotions just thinking like, God, you're amazing. Like, I can't believe how much you're doing in these students' lives. And this is just a little glimpse of that, guys. So, there's, I'm not going to lie. There's some Wednesdays I drive home and I'm in tears, right? And it's just because of what God's doing. I mean, I mean, we're not playing games. I mean, these are real lives. And these are real situations. And these are real battles that we have to walk through. And, uh, and just knowing that they are learning how to put their faith on God. There's that song we sang earlier, and I have to get out because I always get the lyrics wrong. Like, I never get it right. I sing it in my head to myself all the time, but I always get it wrong, I think. It's that song, Firm Foundation. And it's been, in my life, this last month, it's just been as, like, the most solid rock I think I've had to stand on so many times. But it says... It says, the rain came and the wind blew, but my house was built on you. It says, I'm safe with you, and I'm going to make it through. Man, it's so awesome. And we get to be a small part of it. And this is a small, this is an amazing part, but it's also a small glimpse of what our youth group is doing. God is building a firm foundation that no matter what comes, they won't be thrown off. You know? So if you guys would, wouldn't mind, I need you off the stage for the next part of this. But. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> um, I'm actually just going to give it to you. Because I think you've, I will just You've done good at me. being on the verge of tears and not letting it just flow. 
God is doing awesome things. We want you guys to partner with us in supporting this youth ministry. And, and part of that is just simply praying for them. So as we ask you to partner with us, we're going to ask our partners to come on up. Ginny and Julie, come on up. We're going to hand it off. Stand by your man. Yeah, I'll take him. We can be together. Oh. All right. Um, so just as they were saying, we're going to give you guys an opportunity to pray over our teens. So in just a little bit, we're going to have our teens come down. Um, and we're going to invite you to actually pray for them, lay hands on them, and pray for them. Some of shared testimonies today, our kids are going through some really, really big things. And when they're in youth group, they don't just disappear. They have to go home to those hard situations. They step on their school campuses to temptations and trials. And it's hard. The things they're going through are hard, hard things. And they need the support of everybody in this room to get them through. Um, when they step on their school campuses, they're told, you get to determine your identity. And your voice in here needs to tell them, no, your identity is found in Christ. Their school campuses are telling them lies constantly. And we need to tell them that you don't get to determine your own truth. You need to go to the word of God to find the truth. They are going through such big things. And our voice in here needs to be louder because we have Christ in us than what the world is telling them. We need to stand alongside of them and say, come on. You know, Jeff and I have been very fortunate in our lives. Um, we've traveled many different places and lived in many different places, and our kids have been away from their real grandparents, their real aunts and uncles, and God has provided our family with what we call surrogate spiritual family members. And you in this room, you need to come alongside our youth and be those surrogate spiritual family members for them. They need spiritual moms and dads and grandparents, aunts and uncles. They need people to come alongside and say, you know what, I'm praying for you. You've got this. I'm going to walk you through this. I'm going to come alongside and guide you through. And we're going to pray together. We're going to go to the word. And we're going to get you through this. We need help up here too. There's four of us up here. We have some amazing, amazing youth leaders but man, our youth group is growing phenomenally, and we need help. We need people to come alongside and support us as well. Um, so Julie's got an amazing scripture that she's going to share too. So um, <laughs> I, tell you, I get nervous just coming up here, but it's really just God. Me just, too. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm, God gave me actually a different scripture. Um, I was sitting here, and I... And I was reminded, I, I had the amazing opportunity to grow up in church my entire life. I was taken to church. My, my parents weren't pastors or musicians. They just brought me to church, and they prayed for me. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for those prayers. And I was reminded, um, I, I had the amazing opportunity to grow up in youth group, and, and there were three things that I remembered as a youth that I had written down in my Bible. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust the Lord with all your heart. Joshua 1, 9, have fear, don't have fear, have courage, <laughs> don't have fear. <laughs> um, and then there's this one story that I've never forgot. I heard it sp spoken. I wrote it down 30-some years ago. And uh, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of a man named Shama. And um, he's been given two scriptures in the whole Bible. But it was powerful. And I look at these youth, and I see these youth as, as Shama, and his story, and, and, and back, and I don't have time to tell this whole story, because we're just about out of time. But he did something that these youth are doing right now. It's like this reckless abandonment. They're done with the world. They don't care anymore, and they're just, I just choose God. They just want God, and they want more of him. And Shama, there was a lot going on with the Philistines, and they were trying to take over this plot of land for a long, long time. And Shammah 
was tired of it. He was done. And you know what he did? And this is in 2 Samuel 23, verses 11 through 12. And there was these battles going on and on and on. And he just was done. He was done with this. And he took up his stand in the midst of the plot, not on the side, looking, thinking, oh, maybe someone else will do it. No, he stood out in the midst of it. And that's what they're doing. These young people are choosing to stand in the midst of the storm. And they're standing firm. And you know what happened to Shama? You know what happened? Because he stood out there in faith. I'm sorry, I'm just going to keep preaching here. And the Philistines were struck down because the Lord worked a great victory. Because he chose to stand. And I challenge you. I want you youth to come up here right now. We're going to pray for you. Church, just stand up. We're going to pray. We're going to end the service in prayer. What God has just put inside of you, you can, you can be like, I don't know what to pray for these kids. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to pray over them. You pray the word of God over their lives. Maybe God's given you a special word that you want to come and just lay hands on. And I invite you, you know, we're going to play some music right now. And we're just gonna we're just gonna let God just have some time, have some space, as His Holy Spirit just moves. And if you feel just church, if you want to come up and pray, we invite you. This is okay. It's okay. I want you to come up. Come up and, and surround our youth. Come and lay hands on our youth. Let them know that they're loved. Let them know that you are here to stand with them as they stand in the midst of the storm. And as you just let God's presence right now just fill this place, fill your heart, maybe a word is just going to come over you and just fill you and you just want to pray, pray it out. And we're going to let this, this time right now, let God just take this time to move, to speak, to heal. I'm just going to pray right now. Keep praying. Just let God just move. He's moving. He's touching. Just speak his heart. Don't be afraid to let the word of God just flow through you. It's okay to just sit in his presence and to have that space. We thank you, God. You are so good, God. You are so good. You are greater than any fear that we carry. You are greater than any worry. You are greater than any, anything that a doctor may say that is terminal. God, you are greater. greater than everything on this earth and we love you empower these young people let us come beside them let us learn from them let us watch them and let us get captured by their passion for you God let it, let it just run and spill on over into our church let these young people lead this church Lord let them show us 
what it's like to step out in abandonment and reckless abandonment for you, God. And when they stand firm, God, in the midst of the storm, will your greatness be shown? Will your greatness be shown in their life? And we thank you, God. We praise you. And we give you the glory and the honor of this this morning. In your great and your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, church. Thank you so much. There's an amazing poster out in the back. It's called Champion Our Youth. Please write a word, a scripture. Let our church just fill that up this morning. There's markers out there. Thank you so much. Have a great day.